Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm the assembly lead. I've been in assembly for nine years now. Uh, basically help the guys get pumps together. I build pumps, uh, coordinate with the stock department to get pumps coming through here to get them out to you guys. So this is a uh, six NNT cutter pump. Uh, Kenny's taking uh, the pump out of the volute right now. Uh, then we're gonna take the impeller lock screw out, take the impeller off and then show you how to uh, properly replace the seal and reinstall the impeller. Uh, something like this, uh, probably from start to finish, probably about two hours to build the whole thing. Uh, the, replacing the seal on one of these doesn't take too long. Usually the longest part is getting the impeller off, depending on how long the pump's been ran and what it's been ran in. Uh, the first thing I'd give a tip on is uh, watch your fingers for the cutters, they're pretty sharp. Uh, the next thing is, is to make sure your seals are clean when they go back in. As you're removing the impeller, you'll see you use two pry bars to pry it off. Sometimes that won't uh, get it off, so you can use a, uh, a puller if you can get one wide enough to pull the impeller off, or you can use a back plate puller to pull it all off at once. I mean, will they have a back plate puller in their kit, or is that something no. that we can provide? Or, or uh, they something. Can buy, or? Uh, they can, I think they can get the drawings for them. Uh, one thing you want to look at when you uh, pull the seals off is you want to check the faces to see if it's e wearing evenly. Uh, this is a used seal out of a test pump that we've been using for engineering. Um, seal looks okay. Uh, you can see there's some blemishes in here. But if you clean this off, it probably wouldn't look as bad. But if the seal is definitely worn down a little bit. One thing you want to do is make sure you save all your impeller shims so when you put your impeller back on after redoing the seal, it uh, you have the proper shimming for the impeller. Also, the, when you put the impeller back on, you want to make sure that there's 30 thousands of back vein clearance. Uh, right now, he's removing the back plate and there's no torque specs on the bolts. So when you put it back together, just make sure that the bolts are as tight as you can get them. Kenny's been here 26 years. Uh, he started in 86. And then he started again in 06. still be in the back plate and as you pull it off make sure you don't drop the back plate to crack the stationary seat these are really brittle and if you drop it onto the shaft it, you could possibly risk cracking it if you're planning on reusing the seal Check that board. what you want to look for if you're going to plant try to reuse this is if there's any scarring scratches cracks um, also like a quick inspection of the o-ring on the outside to see if it's got any and dents or cuts in it. Would you put another, will there be another uh, rubber piece or an o-ring that goes? It'll come with the seal if they get the kit, yeah. And do you suggest just for safety's sake and use reliability, just not reusing it? Yeah. Reuse yeah. It. When you're going back together, pump engine stuff can build up around the edge of the stationary seat, so you want to make sure to clean this bore back up before you put your seal back together so you can make sure it goes in evenly and you don't get anything on the faces.
Uh, Kenny used a scotch bright pad to clean up the bore, but you can use like a piece of scotch bright, uh, very fine sandpaper. You can also use red scotch bright, just kind of clean it up. Kenny sprayed, uh, we call it safety solvent, but it's essentially brake clean in there just to clean up any of the dust or anything that was in there. So when it goes back together, it stays nice and clean. You want to make sure that bore is clean before you start putting your new seal in. Also on the back plate register, you want to make sure that that's free of any rust or debris. Uh, if it cocks it a little bit, you can get uh, a little bit of rubbage when you put your pump all the way back together. So you just want to make sure that this is nice and clean and that the face of the bracket's nice and clean. Okay, did you check the bracket too? Yeah, I wiped it down. Yeah. <laughs> When you put the bolts back into the back plate, you want to make sure you use like anti-seize. <laughs> the anti-seize will help in the reinstallation and the removal of the bolts if you ever have to pull it off again. Everything from the factory is anti-seized on the, all the bolts that go into the car. So when you get your new seal, it's gonna come with a stationary seat, a rotating element, and then the spring. So when you pull your seal out, you wanna check the faces to make sure that they didn't get damaged somewhere along the lines of shipping or uh, handling from the factory. Uh, Kenny's used uh, STP or an equivalent style of oil to, to go around the O-ring to ease in the installation of installing the stationary seat. You want to make sure you do not touch the faces when you install when you're putting that in. Uh, we have round pieces of PVC pipe that are clean on the ends that we use to push on the stationary seat. Uh, it prevents a make sure they're smooth if you use those to prevent the scratching. As you can see, once the STP and with the PVC pipe, they slide in pretty pretty nicely. You want to make sure you push them in straight. If you cock them, they could, you could possibly crack them or break them. If you crack it or break it, you're going to know right away because usually it's, uh, you'll see like a chip or you'll hear a loud popping noise as you install it. On the insides of the bellows, they come with a glue. You want to make sure you clean that glue out. That could cause a leak between the bellows and the sleeve if it's left in there. And you're just using the STP again? Yes. Yeah. He's, Using the SDP again to lube the bellows. Then you just wipe a little bit on the sleeve. Don't get it on the face. Uh, be sure not to get it on the faces. That'll cause the seal to leak. If you push on the seal with a screwdriver or a file to get it to go on all the way, you want to make sure you push on the rubber part and not on the outer ring. If you push on the outer ring, you can separate the bellows from the seal. So if you push on the rubber part, you're pushing on the rubber and you're pushing the seal into the face. You want to make sure your face is touch. And then you put the key back in or do you, do you check any tolerances at this point? Or? Uh, we, so now that the seal's in, we're going to start putting the impeller back on. You want to make sure you put your key in and then replace any shims if there was any. Uh, before you put your impeller on. You want to make sure you use the right amount of shims that came off. That way you know you're going to be getting the right back vein clearance. Kenny's putting some anti-seize on the shaft to help the impeller slide onto the shaft easier. So at this point, uh, you want to put your spring on.
When you're doing the, when you're replacing the seal, only time you pull your impeller off, you want to be sure to replace the lock screws. Uh, sometimes they can stretch out a little bit, be damaged on the way out. Uh, Kenny applied red Loctite to it. We use red Loctite on all our lock screws and all of our pumps to be sure they do not back off or come out. Uh, the torque spec on the 5 8 lock screw is uh, 155 foot-pounds, which the air guns get it right about 155, 160, somewhere right around there. Right now, Kenny's using a gauge to check the back vein clearance. So what he's doing is he's going around to all the veins and checking for 30,000's back vein clearance. Right about 31. And he said he's right about 31, which is within tolerance. The tolerance is plus or minus 8 thou. So we can go be as tight as 22 thousandths and we can be as open as 38 thousandths and that's within the engineering requirements for the pump. Uh, when, when you do this, you want to make sure that uh, everything's going together smoothly and nicely and nothing's binding up, jamming up when you get, get her back together. Uh, he's putting a, this, this would be a, a new... Yeah. Right now he's putting the used gasket back on, but you want to replace the gaskets. We put a little grease on our gaskets to hold them onto the back plate when we drop them in the volute. That way they don't fall off and you don't have to try to mess with it staying on or try and get it bound up if you put it on the volute and try to drop the back plate through it. It won't catch it and break it and tear it. So after he gets the bolts tightened up, after dropping the rotating element into the volute, uh, we'll turn the pump, make sure it uh, turns freely, nothing's bound up or nothing got caught up uh, during our uh, seal installation. Uh, can turn the pump, looks like everything spins pretty good.